So any e-commerce app typically needs some sort of cart functionality. You need a way to add items into a bin of some sort and then later compile those into some sort of transaction and then carry out a payment flow. Um, this whole course won't deal with the payment side of things. That's a whole nother freaking can of worms that's, you know, very, I guess, hard to figure out. It's not impossible. Obviously, there's tons of sites doing it, but with Ruby on Rails, there's different ways you can approach it, maybe using an actual uh, payment integration like Stripe or something, or maybe build your own if you want, which would be a challenge. But I would lean towards the Stripe route if you're going that path. But we won't get that far in this series simply because I just don't have the time and bandwidth. But more or less, I want the add to cart functionality to work. So I just want it to be able to take an item that we have here and add it to a cart and see the prices as they basically, as you add items to a cart, so you know what your total would be and, and whatnot. You can also empty your cart. So to do that, we need to generate a few more models that have kind of customized parameters on both the model and the controllers. So let's get started by creating first a cart con or cart model and we'll start there. So we'll actually just do a scaffold called cart. And if you really don't want like the style sheets and stuff with this stuff, you can just pass in flags that say no style sheets. And no JavaScripts. I think it's two dashes. I could be wrong. We'll see. Yeah, so let's get that stuff. So that's cool. I just didn't want to have to delete the, the stuff again, you know. Uh, with that done, we can go ahead and do a migration. At that point, you have created our carts table, not in our gem file, but in our database schema, we should see carts. Doesn't have anything that associated with it right now, but that's okay. Next, we need a, what I'm gonna call a line items model. And this is gonna be what really is responsible for like housing the item that's in your cart. And this will repeat itself based on how many line items are in your cart from that point forward. So we'll actually need to do another model that's called line item. And some fancy rails wizardry here. <laughs> is uh, you can make stuff reference other models from the command line itself. So we can just do instrument references and then cart belongs to. And this is kind of hard to wrap your head around, but it's more or less saying uh, the instrument's gonna reference the line item and then the cart is gonna belong to a line item. So we're just doing this all at once. When you generate this, it should actually do all those things and set those parameters in your uh, models. It did do the stupid style sheet thing again though, so let me fix that. Let me delete this file. But if you go into our models now, we can see that our line item belongs to an instrument and it belongs to a cart. And then our cart, our cart's going to have many line items. And be dependent destroy for starters. So with that done, we can check to see what our instruments got going on. This should have many line items as well. And I think I forgot to migrate that. So let's double check our migration. First, see that that looks good. Yeah, so he's got foreign keys here. So let's go ahead and migrate. Cool. So that should be all set then in our line items. We've got that, which looks good. And our user has many instruments, cart. I'm just making sure this all looks good to me. All right, so one thing we wanna do that I'm gonna kind of it's kind of over my head, but it's more or less, think of it as a helper for including into controllers and models. So it's called a concern. 
and it's in the models path and there's a concern folder there. I'm gonna create one that's called current cart. And this is just be just responsible for like looking into parameters in your path and finding out which session you are currently on. So it's kind of adding a cookie, so to speak, in your Rails app and knows that you are browsing a specific cart. It's a little over my own head, but I'm gonna kind of go with the flow here. So we're gonna find the cart, which is the model we just made, and then find it by the session called cart ID. And then if it can't find it, we can use this built-in rescue thing where we do the active record, record not found. So if that happens, we can do something. We'll actually create a card. And then make that session ID equal to the card ID. something like that. So that, if that in mind, we can go ahead and include that in other areas. For instance, in our controllers, if we go to line items, we can include that now. And Rails knows it's a camel case inclusion, but we need to actually set that line item since we're carrying it over, or set the card, excuse me, so we'll actually set the line item first and action and then it's only on that creation method cool so really we don't need all these actions but i just scaffold to save some time um, on create is the one we're focusing on. We need to find the instrument with the parameters of instrument ID. And then align items, instead of the line item new, we're gonna do uh, a card add instrument, which will be a definition we create and instead of the line item where we redirect I want to redirect to the card and instead of this saying this I want to say item added to cart the one line I need to make sure we add is add instrument and that's going to be on our model so we can create that pass in the instrument And within here, we need to get the current item, whatever that's what I'm calling it, and it's line items find by instrument ID, and it needs to be instrument .id. So that's we can use that local variable. So we're going to say if that exists, let's do an increment value. quantity So that's more or less what we're doing is saying, finding by the instrument ID of which we still need to add, I think in our migration. So um, we might need to do that next. We also need to add the quantity too. So let's do that too. So our most recent migration is this one. It looks like this. 
and we should be able to add the new migration where we add the quantity to the line items. So let's do that one real quick. Instead of passing anything, I'm just going to write this one out because it's kind of intense. So it'll be, it'll look like this and we'll add a column and it's going to be line items for a table or column, excuse me. No, it's the table. And then we're going to add quantity. We want it to be an integer, uh, but we want it to default to one. So each time you add something to a cart, the count increases from one as opposed to zero. So because in programming, it starts at zero. So we want it to actually start at one in this case. So with that done, we can rails generate or rails db migrate, excuse me. So that's where we're getting that quantity field right here. So now we have that. We also need to do a pretty big migration where we can combine items in the card if they're added. Um, let's get our controller set up first before we go crazy there. First, let me double check our routes. So we've got all of our resources. Since we scaffold those out, those are all there. It should be all set. And for controllers, let's make sure everything's in check there. So we can go to our carts controller and double check that that looks good. We can make sure there's not an invalid cart. And Rails has some built-in rescues, is what I call them. I don't know, rescue from. Um, so this one in this case is gonna be if the record isn't found. And you can actually do that with a your own method in a sense. So you could just pass with and then invalid cart is what I'm gonna call it. And you could set that down below in this area. So we could just tap into the log and say this, this is more or less just for our own purposes. And but more importantly, we want to redirect the person to the root path. If they happen to view a card, they shouldn't. This is going to come in handy later, but we can do an if block if the card.id is equal to session. Card ID. So we're hooking into your user session instead of like an actual like you're logged in or something. So it's more or less checking for a cookie in your browser and using the URL to the advantage. So this, in the sense, we can destroy the cart, basically remove everything from of it. Um, if your session is first the same as the card ID, and then the card ID is nil and everything. So when we did that migration a while back, hopefully this makes sense. We did that references thing. Let me go. And what that does is it creates references to the instrument. So in our actual schema, if you look, we have automatic card ID and instrument IDs that were added when we created that. So that stuff's already on the table. We don't have to add those in future migrations. So it's pretty convenient. Um, it adds indexes there. So it establishes that relationship as you go. So that's kind of a shorthand way to do that without having to type it all out and add multiple migrations. So it seems like I missed something, but in the sense that that migration that we added kind of did a lot of the work for us. So sorry if that's not super clear, but that's just kind of what's going on. One thing I want to do uh, on all of our controllers, which we'll need later is add that current card thing too. And then we need to still set cart. And I just pretty much gave access to it from anywhere in the app at this point. 
And that's going to be handy for showing on the nav bar the current card quantity and all that stuff. Okay, so let's double check our line items. Here we're including the cart, we're setting the line item so we can find it. And we're doing the cart for only the creation method, so that's all good. So here's where basically the magic's happening. We find the instrument by the ID, which was in that migration I showed you before. And then we're using that line item and making it the cart by adding that instrument using this helper we added to our model. Um, I know this is kind of like all over the place, but it's on the cart model, add instrument, but we're passing in the parameters here. And then we need the instrument ID here. We don't necessarily need the cart ID though. Kind of don't want that to go through. So that's all good. Um, on the destroy method, we can do kind of a similar thing, but we need to find the cart with the session again. So, and then from there, we can take the line item and destroy it and go back to the cart path instead of the line item. And then pass in that cart which is what we're finding here. Okay, so with those done, we, there's a few more um, helpers we can add that we're gonna use in the views, and that's what's gonna come next. We can double check if this works next though. So let's go to our show view and add that link to the cart, and that's gonna look like this. So we got our add to cart button too, and this creates an actual form. So um, it's kind of a form slash button thing. It's interesting, but it's a Rails helper to me to make the button. And then we can do the line items path and then include the instrument ID and then pass an instrument. If that goes okay, we should be able to go ID. Okay, so we need to actually do one more thing in our model on our instrument. And it's this weird before destroy thing that I forgot about. This doesn't really reflect what I just did, but I wanted to make sure I didn't forget this. So with that done, we can go make a private. All right, so this, I'm not 100% sure what's going on, but I think it's just checking if the line items are empty, don't throw an error kind of thing. So that's okay. And that's just what we wanna do before we destroy an actual instrument. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on now. In fact, I might, for Grins, restart my app and see if anything changes here. Pram is missing. Or the value is empty line item. Let me double check my controllers. Oh, I know why. This should be instrument. So on our actual line items controller, I was passing through the previous parameters of the line items and I actually wanted the instrument to pass through instead. Uh, so that's kind of a little gotcha because we created this variable uh, here and we needed to use it. So let's see if that works. We're going to the card at least. It looks like I typed rescue wrong, can't spell. Let's go do that in our, where was that? Cards controller, okay. Rescue. Boom, item added to cart, awesome. Okay, so that's good. So from this point forward, we have something in the cart. So every, everything seems to be working. Up next would be to update those views now to reflect everything. Um, before we do, I wanna add a few helpers that are gonna make our lives a little easier. 
and those will be in some of our models. So let me figure those out for you. And then we'll probably go to the views next, uh, just so we have um, a separate video for those. So let's go to the models and I'm gonna check out the line item model and add this one. So that's basically just taking a price that we declare and converting it to an integer, multiplying it by the quantity that is set on the store or on the cart line item, and then converting it to an integer in the same time. So we're just doing that calculation so we can display it on the front end so it looks nice. And then let's see, on our cart, we need the same thing, but in a diff different fashion. So we can do different, our depth total price And inside this one, we'll do line items to a so basically two in array and some are some those, but we need to map them. So this is more or less just taking anything we add to the cart and creating a total price based on that. So each time that's added, okay. So in the next video, we're gonna actually get into the views so we can make more sense of what the hell I'm doing here. So if you're kind of scratching your head, that's okay. I think it's gonna make more sense in the next video. So I'll see you in that one.